One of the most appealing parts about a Chromebook is the possibility of getting a decent piece of hardware for a small price. And few do it as well as this device, the Lenovo Chromebook C340. It's the follow-up to a very popular Chromebook from last year, the C330, and it improves in almost every single way. So let's talk about it. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers, including consumers that use Chromebooks just like this, the Lenovo C340, because they are excellent at keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or out and about. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to learn more and get started today. What makes this device great is a combination of all its parts for a low price. So let's talk through each of those pieces as we normally do for any other review. And we'll start with the overall build quality. And one of the things that Lenovo did that improved upon last year's model was add an aluminum lid on the top and add some color choices. So you can see the one we have here is the kind of like rose gold pinkish version. There's also a nice silver version if you're not kind of into this colorway. But in general, they added an aluminum lid, which gives the whole thing a lot more stable feel and they didn't really change too much else. And other than some things we're gonna talk about with the screen and some of the bezel stuff, I don't have any real issue with the way that this thing is put together. It feels nice and firm. It's not overly thick or chunky, but it feels like it could kind of take a beating. And I just kind of like the way it looks on a table and it feels good in the hand and it feels sturdy and substantial without feeling super cheap. And for a device in this kind of price bracket, I think that hits all the points you're looking for. A concession we normally expect to see in Chromebooks in a sub $300 price bracket is a crummy screen in general, and we've reviewed plenty of them. Look back through our videos, you'll see tons of Chromebooks where I say, hey, everything's good about this device at this price, you're just gonna have to live with a bad screen. But that's not the case with the C340 though. This device, just like its predecessor, has an IPS panel. It's not the brightest thing in the world, about 180 nits or so, so don't expect crazy brightness, but good colors and great viewing angles. It's a glass panel, so when you flip it into tablet mode, it doesn't feel weird, plastic, or bendy. And in general, again, for a device in this kind of price bracket, it just delivers. There wasn't any part of me that thought, oh God, I hate looking at this screen. I don't want to use this Chromebook because I can't stand the screen. In general, it just kind of delivers. The one issue I have with the display isn't the display panel itself. Like I said, it's colorful and it's got good viewing angles and stuff like that. Even the resolution on it at 11.6 inches, it's 16 by 9, 1366 by 768. You know, it's not the most pixel dense display you're ever going to see, but it looks pretty decent but the bezels around it are a little bit ridiculous. I mean, they're huge and I get that they probably needed to add space in order to make room for a, a proper size keyboard, but the bezel across the bottom of this thing is just massive. And I think it used to have Lenovo on there and the older version of it, and maybe that kind of made my eye not see it as much, but it's just black across the bottom there and it's really high up off the keyboard deck. So it kind of looks a little bit awkward, but again, it doesn't take away from the usability of this display, it just, looks a little dated and a little bit funny. Moving on down, the keyboard and trackpad are both pretty decent. They're not the best trackpad and keyboard you're gonna see, but they're also not the worst. The keyboard is uh, a little bit mushy and the click mechanism could be better. I did miss keystrokes from time to time and I use this device as my daily device for a solid week, but I wouldn't say it's a reason not to go buy this Chromebook. There are keyboards that are far worse than this one, but there are a ton of them that are a lot better and Lenovo makes some pretty decent keyboards for Chromebooks, so I kind of expected a little bit better here, but just don't expect this to be a brilliant typing experience. The trackpad, on the other hand, is surprisingly solid. Again, it's not Gorilla Glass and it's not the most exceptional trackpad I've ever used, but generally when we talk about cheaper Chromebooks, they have trackpads that get kind of messy and pick up oils and are hard to navigate on and they flop around a little bit or they're too firm to press. I had none of those issues whatsoever with this trackpad. It's easily the most enjoyable plastic non-glass trackpad I've used in a Chromebook. Around the sides of the device, you get a pretty generous port selection with a USB type A on both sides and a USB type C on both sides. All those ports do exactly what you'd expect. The C will charge on either side, do audio output, video output, all that kind of stuff, data transfer. You also get a headphone microphone jack and a micro SD card slot. So as far as connectivity is concerned, this thing's not lacking in the least. The other openings on this Chromebook leave a lot to be desired though, and I'm talking about the speakers here. Usually I don't expect too much from speakers. I really don't. Like laptop speakers in general are pretty bad. 
These might be the worst speakers I've ever heard on a laptop, not just a Chromebook, on any laptop. They are not only tinny sounding, they're insanely quiet. We put them up, I, I was trying to figure out how bad they were. I put them up against the Pixelbook Go, which maybe is completely unfair since those are probably the best speakers I've ever heard. And it wasn't even close, which then caused us to go, I wonder what it sounds like on a phone. So I got my Pixel 4 XL out and turned it up and the phone blew it away. Like, cause my initial comment was, it sounds like phone speakers. And no, it doesn't even sound like phone speakers. I don't know what to compare it to. Just don't plan on listening to like any audio whatsoever on this thing. Carry some headphones, these, these are bad. Finally, on the inside, we need to talk about internals and this is where things kind of take an upswing again, in general for Chromebooks, not just for this Chromebook, but the latest generation of affordable Intel chips. So the Celeron N4000, we, called it Gemini Lake for quite some time. The chips that are in these Chromebooks get the job done in general. I've used it for almost an entire week as my only device. I didn't crack open any other Chromebook. I did all the stuff that I normally would do, hooking up an external display, running virtual desktops, all that kind of stuff. And while there was a animation stutter here and there, in general, this thing absolutely delivered. I didn't really run into any big problems. I didn't run into any shutdowns or freeze ups or anything like that. And the chipset just does its job. And I've seen other people complain that possibly the MediaTek that they used in the last version of this is a better processor. I would have to argue completely different, at least for using it with Chrome OS and the general things you're gonna do with a Chromebook. The performance of this thing was way better than I would have expected. Paired up with that decent performing chip is four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. And it's nice to see in a sub $300 Chromebook that Lenovo decided to put 64 gigs of internal storage instead of the 32 that a lot of people for their entry models put in their Chromebooks. Battery life has also been stellar. I've had no issue getting through a full work day with this thing. Again, the low pixel count on there and that Gemini Lake processor kind of pair up for easily some of the best battery life I've seen on a Chromebook. As a matter of fact, right now I was just checking, the battery's almost full at like 96%, but it's saying that I could get about 13 hours at this point. I wouldn't count on that. Once you start using it, that number's gonna go down, but don't be surprised if you get easily 10 hours out of this device. One final note with this thing. I actually found myself playing Stadia on this device more than just about any other device, and it's for a combination of things. One, it's small, and so it could almost be a secondary device in your bag. But when you launch Stadia, Stadia doesn't care what kind of device you're running. It doesn't care what the processor is. It doesn't care about any of those things. As long as it can stream the media, then it can play Stadia. And since it's a 720p display, it's also gonna stream Stadia at 720p, which requires almost no bandwidth whatsoever. But it looks still nice and sharp on here because the display is kind of smaller. So what I found was, Pairing up a mouse and playing Destiny 2 or playing uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint was actually really great on this device and it made me want to get this thing out to play Stadia on it more than just about any other device I've got. So we come to the end of it and as always the question becomes, is this thing worth buying? If you're looking for a sub $300 Chromebook that can do a lot for you, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we made our best of 2019 Chromebooks list and this in the 300 and under category was our winner. And for clear reasons, for this kind of money, you just don't expect to have a screen that's this decent or performance that's this decent or matter of fact, build quality and trackpad that are this decent. If really the only concession you're gonna to have to deal with is chunky bezels and bad speakers, seems like a pretty easy decision to make. Now, if you're in the market for something that's high end and you want high quality and you want better speakers and you want a better screen and all that kind of stuff, no, this isn't the Chromebook for you. But if you're looking at something under $300, you're looking for a good deal and you're looking for the best bang for your buck, this one is so easy to recommend. So if that's you, go out and snag one. There'll be a link in the description down below. But guys, that's been it for this one. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, go down there and hit that subscribe button and make sure and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.